Hi guys, I just wanted to go over a little quick review, nothing uh, too onerous, uh, but just to complete some basic things uh, for week 14 for Dent 1015 to give us some direction of what we can expect on just a few basic multiple choice questions. Uh, I mean, we have this one handout here on uh, acrylic partial dentures. This is somewhat similar to the one that we had on our first half of the semester on cold cure, self-curing acrylic parcels. We kind of reserve those self-curing resin ones to the single tooth, two tooth partials, um, so-called the thumb partials even if there's wires or strengtheners or additions or immediates. Um, but when we get into something a little bit larger, like the one we just finished here, and we've got the six teeth on here, these are, would be our uh, acrylic partials that we heat cured this one because of the size of it and possibly the longevity of it that we're expectation of lifespan, this prosthetic. But there is some indications of treatment of why an individual would tend to receive the acrylic partial versus the cast partial. Um, and I think number one is uh, acrylic partials, really all of them, whether they're self-cured or heat-cured, are transitional in nature. Meaning something's going to, to happen to this appliance. We're expecting or anticipating something to happen in the near future for this client. Uh, alterations of this prosthetic or additions to this prosthetic or relines of this prosthetics are anticipated and will be needed in the short term. Alterations, uh, meaning that we may, you know, add 3-4 or add 4-4 four, four and add the wire on 4-3 or add the two front teeth if these are going to be immediately extracted in the future. I mean, this could be even a treatment plan for a full lower denture immediate if the final eight teeth are to be removed at a later date. Uh, but relines, if this is a temporary prosthetic and the patient undergoes six extractions at the same time, it would be prudent to trouble a treatment plan with the acrylic partial, restoring vertical dimension, waiting till kind of tissue stability and then deciding for the treatment. Are we going to reline this acrylic partial? Or are we going to embark on a new cast partial? But really the indication of treatment is that this is transitional in nature or temporary in nature. Where as in number two here, the life of the denture is expected to be short. Example, immediate partial denture. As I've just explained that we're not anticipating this for more than a year possibly even two. Unfortunately, there's a lot of treatment plans which will include this partial denture for an infinite amount of time. And this is probably due to, you know, the social economic reason of the client. I mean, this is, is at least better for us than nothing. Uh, we're not, we can't afford implant treatment or, or the cast partial treatment later on. Uh, so this life of the denture expected to be short. Now, this is the academic reasoning for acrylic partial dentures. There's other ones that I've alluded to about socioeconomic, et cetera, um, which can um, be not the best reason to receive an acrylic partial. There's a number three here, when the remaining teeth have a poor prognosis. So we're going to make the acrylic partial and four to four here, either some, none, or all of these teeth have a poor prognosis. It's transitional in nature where few remaining teeth can stabilize the prosthetic for a limited period of time while the patient develops the neuromuscular skills necessary to control the planned replacement complete denture. So two things I'm saying here in number three. The remaining of these teeth are a poor prognosis, so we don't want to put something in here uh, very rigid or even something, let's say, more costly or something more permanent uh, where these teeth are going to be the lifespan is short, they're going to be extracted, or the patient may lose them. And they choose not to lose them now. The patient is in control of this treatment plan as well. Another one I said that maybe the patient now will receive this prior to receiving the immediate full denture, as I've said here in number three, to develop neuromuscular skills wearing a prosthetic and 
to control the planned replacement complete denture successfully. So the remaining posterior teeth are extracted first. Let the resorption and atrophy occur here till the bone loss is stable. Create a prosthetic. So therefore, when we're undergoing complete denture principles and treatment, meaning like we need an occlusion rim to get vertical dimension for centric relation and face bow records, etc., that we have some stability in the posterior section here, that when the final immediate full denture is created, that at least the posterior is stable. The anterior will not be undergoing tissue conditioner relines for subsequent months and then final uh, completed with a final reline. So this is uh, uh, also uh, necessary in full denture, immediate denture placement, which we'll discuss further in DEN 1159 next season. Uh, number four, when a diagnostic denture is required before a definitive treatment plan can be formulated, this denture determines whether an increase in occlusal vertical dimension can be tolerated by the patient. So we've got a diagnostic treatment plan here, diagnostic acrylic parcel denture. So this denture is made, this patient is very overclosed. They've lost any vertical stops in their centric occlusion. Um, and we need to increase the vertical dimension incrementally to, for the patient to adapt to this new vertical dimension, which theoretically is their correct vertical dimension. So we would make a uh, acrylic partial that would subsequently increase the vertical dimension, uh, increase the bite registration. So we would incrementally raise this up here until the patient's vertical dimension is restored or what the practitioner agrees to uh, prior to the treatment. Until the patient can't tolerate being opened anymore. I have the word tolerated here. This is a diagnostic treat denture temporary to increase the vertical dimension from patients that are overclosed before receiving any further dental, te dental technology, whether it's implant related, whether it's cast partial related, removable or fixed, that this diagnostic denture increases the vertical dimension. Number five, well, this provides a more permanent solution where only a few isolated teeth remain. So if the client is only missing, let's say, 3-3 three, three, and 4-3, if the client is missing only a few teeth, as such here, made a wax model, patient is... Uh, left with three, six, and four, six. Kind of a, a strange uh, order of edentialism. But if only two teeth remain, uh, what can be done here for the treatment plan? And we can make a cast partial denture, but is that really necessary? It's almost a full denture. We're making acrylic partial denture. So as a number five, this is a more permanent solution when there's a few isolated teeth remaining. So if something should happen to these two molars or one of them or both of them, then we could create a full lower denture. And whether that full lower denture be stable or not, then the discussion for implants, et cetera, is further down the line. This is really a strange one, number six here, where number six is the denture provided for a young patient where the growth of the jaws is still proceeding. So the growth cycle is not complete. And, you know, we might even have a mixed dentition here with some deciduous teeth. You know, highly unlikely, but it can happen where we're going to wear this acrylic partial denture, again, temporary, till uh, we've had the growth cycle somewhat completed. And then we can move forward with... Uh, you know, something more permanent, whether it be fixed or removable. I mean, this would be more, I would see if the patient is congenitally missing laterals, it seems to be pretty popular. So they're wearing an acrylic partial to replace the laterals, even sometimes with a retainer, uh, to keep this space uh, maintained for future prosthetics, whether they be Maryland bridges, porcelain veneers, implants, 300 bridges, six unit bridges, 
cast partials in some instances. But these acrylic partials are basically uh, space maintainers, maintaining the, the whole stomachnathic system. So nothing collapses, nothing migrates, nothing moves, nothing becomes overclosed, maintaining the neuromusculature of the patient over time. I mean, I think this is our goal, is to create prosthetics where we're not doing any future harm to the patient. We're trying to maintain the health of what they have already, if not increase it, without any doing any more harm. So here's some six indications for treatment for an acrylic partial. And there's some advantages. Obviously, it's low cost. And they're very easily modified. Being all acrylic, we can... Uh, we can add, we can add two teeth, one tooth, wires, strengtheners, uh, relines, rebases. It's, it's a lot of modifications are happening easier without, you know, like a cast parcel where we're welding, a lazy welding or adding on retention. And obviously we've got some disadvantages to the acrylic partial. I mean, these are, these are definitely weaker and less rigid than the metal chromium cobalt counterparts. They're more likely, more likely to flex and fracture during mastication. As you can see, the one we just fixed here, it does have some flexion to it. I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure. We have the strengthener bar in here. But, uh, you know, acrylic partial denture, especially when you lose vertical or, or bone support, it was not relined, uh, most likely it's going to fracture. And this is where the treatment planning has to be followed up from the dental practitioner. The dental laboratory is really at a disadvantage here where we're receiving prosthetics that are just fractured and we put them back together, assuming that the professional is going to reline them or post-care and they, for whatever reason, patient doesn't come back or they don't follow up. But they will follow up when it fractures and then ultimately say, well, I just had this fixed, you know, a month or two ago and it broke again. Something's wrong with your dental technology. But sometimes the underlying, if not most of the time, the underlying factor is that the, the fit was unstable, wasn't relined. And when we are occluding on something without any kind of basal support on the intaglial surface, naturally we're going to increase the ability for this prosthetic to fracture. And this happens a lot in the denture practice. So a lot of the times here at a dental lab, we'll, we'll uh, send the repair out with recommendations that there's a follow-up of subsequent tissue conditioners and relines. And if this is not carried out, then any type of short-term, uh, any type of short-term guarantee would be null and void, incurring uh, future costs. I mean, this is where the dental laboratory is really at a loss. Unfortunately, historically, a lot of dental labs would use the denture repair as the lost leader, so to speak, the lost leader to their dental prosthetic departments. So, you know, if we do all these repairs and, and patch-ups and fix-ups and many times for free, that we won't jeopardize the influx of fixed prosthodontics coming to our office from these offices. You know, we'll give you the, the denture repairs and benefit of the doubt, but please keep the crown and bridge coming. But these days I see a lot of specialty laboratories and ortho and partials and, and full dentures or acrylic laboratories. And then the fixed laboratories are separate where we can't afford to give away these services. So we really need to put a stop gap in place. Uh, and I'm thinking that's a good one, is that we would kind of treatment plan from afar, so to speak, or make recommendations on the prosthetic. Possibly, many times, patients never go back to the dental office for a reline or a refit or even a new one. They're only going to go back to the dental office when something's broken, or something really needs repair. They're not going to go for fun and say, oh, I'm coming for elective treatment. And the denture department is usually emergency treatment. Something's happened. So, uh, sorry for the long diatribe, but number two is more likely to flex and fracture under mastication. Uh, these are disadvantage of these acrylic partials. They're bulky. I mean, we've had to make this uh, lingual aproning or plating of the teeth on this last prosthetic that we made. Look how thick it is. I mean, this is bulky. It's gonna, it's gonna uh, impede on the patient's uh, um, linguistics acoustics of their speech will be impaired. And then if it's uh, this bulky, then the patient's compliance is going down, patient compliance. They're less tolerant 
to wear such a prosthetic. When the patient undergoes tooth loss in the posterior section, many things are happening here stomachnathically where the tongue will start to expand to fill in the space. The cheeks will then cave in to collapse over the posterior ridge using kind of adipose tissue to keep everything kind of stable. Then we go ahead and put a prosthetic in, cheek, bi uh, cheek biting, tongue biting. We need to part everything back. And then all of a sudden we've got a tongue. The glossus is just so oversized and now we've constricted it to, to fit and, 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 and operate between these two lingual flanges. Then we've got the patient's tolerance level going down. And then things will be like, well, my neighbor has a denture and they talk well. Well, you just got yours two days ago and you've never worn one in your life and your whole tongue has overgrown and cheeks have collapsed in and your tolerance level is low and it needs to increase over time. And a lot of patients, they're not ready for this. They figure, oh yeah, business as usual. Business is not usual. This prosthetic here is only gonna replace small percentage of their function, 20, 30% of their function. Aesthetics in the posterior region uh, is really kind of questionable if anyone can see back there, depending on their smile. Let's move on to number five though, these disadvantages before I get off sub subjects again. Uh, there's less scope of design for acrylic parcels, which allows the gingival margins to be left uncovered. So when we have a case like this, or like this, or any type of acrylic parcel denture situation, because we're trying to gain vertical support, we don't have the luxury of occlusal stops or occlusal rests, like in the cast partials. And this is solely, you know, tissue supported in the posterior section. We're trying to grab some anterior support. So we plated all these teeth with acrylic as such here. We plated the whole anterior section. When we do these posterior teeth, they will be plated. This covers the gingival margins. And when we're covering gingival margins with acrylic, we are basically under rotation of the appliance in the patient's mouth. This is kind of really uh, exacerbating or affecting or irritating the free gingival margin food compaction, elongating the periodontal ligaments, eventually uh, the free gingival margin is in retreat of a healthy tissue gingival margin, and these dentures becomes almost, let's say, tissue strippers on the lingual, where you'll see over a long period of time that is really damaged tissue, especially when we have a lot of rotations of a partial denture here that's tissue supported in the posterior section. Now I'm exaggerating the movement, but there is a buccal lingual rotation. There is some small rotation around the ridge, uh, but these rotations in movement are gonna really irritate these gingival margins over a long time. That's why these appliances aren't really the best over long-term solution for this client. So that's a major disadvantage about covering these gingival margins. There is no other design not to cover the margins. We need to uh, gain as much stability within the oral cavity as possible and cover these uh, natural teeth uh, by lingual aproning or the plating. Like I said, we do not have the luxury of vertical stops or occlusal, st occlusal rests, etc. cetera. Uh, another disadvantage, really lastly here, uh, is that acrylic is radiolucent. Location of the prosthetic can prove difficult if the denture is swallowed or inhaled. So the patient fractures, uh, I guess knowing where the fractured part is within someone's lung tissue. I mean, think if it's in the GI system, it's going to come out eventually. But I mean, this is a really, uh, maybe not so strong of a disadvantage, but nevertheless, it is a disadvantage. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, 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 quiz questions. Really, really simple. So I don't want any kind of stress I and mean, people are undergoing so much stress these days as it is with the uh, with the uh, C19 uh, virus and being uh, self quarantine and self distancing and separated from their loved ones and their family and having to kind of virtually communicate whether it's telephone or Skype or FaceTime and uh, it's really kind of separated us a bit. So it is not really intended to stress you out here. 
But you know what? I, I may even decide to just pass along these questions and let you research the answers. But I'm thinking and I'm very confident, if not some of you, if not all of you, will be able to achieve you know, a few basic uh, questions um, on acrylic partials. And most of them are derived from those positive and negatives or indications of treatment of the acrylic partial dentures we just talked about. Uh, secondary to those indications of treatment, uh, we're going to discuss in, in, a, in a multiple choice format about holding and drawing. And what holding is and what drawing is in relation to investing partial dentures. So we've got uh, indications of treatment. We've got holding and drawing. Uh, we've got disadvantages. Disadvantages of acrylic partial dentures. Um, and we also want to talk about really our uh, rot wire clasp design. If I was to illustrate quickly a bicuspid and our height of contour and our engagement below the height of contour of our rot wire clasps. I mean, really the, uh, the, the tooth bulge here from the tooth development is on the buckle uh, midline. But if we can engage uh, two thirds, I mean, I don't even want to say, uh, you know, two thirds, 66% of the undercut here on our rot wires. And whether that be for bicuspids or whether that be for molars, roughly two thirds, if I was to divide the clinical crown into thirds, roughly, you know, 60, this is roughly 66% is below the height of contour and should engage uh, the undercut by at least 66%. Um, I'm thinking that's about it. We've got indications of treatment. We've got disadvantages of acrylic partial dentures. We've got holding and drawing. And we've got some clasp uh, basic uh, rot wire clasp theory and uh, check on your blackboard for week 15 um, we'll submit some questions there that um, you can answer if there's any questions in the meantime uh, whether it's regarding your practical grade which I'm just updating I think some of you were missing some of your evaluations uh, I'm pretty sure I marked most of them before I left the school uh, if I haven't, then I'll just prorate the other ones that I have for you, uh, knowing that full well that they have been submitted. Um, and it's just really unfortunate in the closing note that we need to finish like this, but we'll try to stay positive. Uh, don't feel shortchanged. We'll, we'll complete and pick up uh, and make most sense of this uh, come September. So uh, once again, a closing note, I wish you well. Stay healthy. Be safe. Um, and I probably won't see you till the fall, so I'm going to wish you a fantastic summer, and uh, hope you get to do all things you enjoy. Take care.